Hey guys, welcome back. Currently I am in the Panshin Islands and I'm here because we didn't have a game this weekend. Pearlies, uh, the team we were supposed to pl be playing, they got pulled out of the league and it's something that I want to talk about in this video and it's one of the bad things about Malaysian football. But one of the best things about living in Malaysia is that when you've got time off, you can go here. At the moment it's like low season, like the island just opened up in February because December to February is monsoon season where it rains a lot and a lot of people come here in like May. So now there's like literally no one on the beach except them people over there. So it, it's great. So to get to this island is relatively simple, especially from where I'm living in Kota Baru. It literally takes two hours. You take a local bus, six ring it, from Kota Baru to the jetty, one hour and 40 minutes away. And then you pay your five ring it conservation fee as a Malaysian citizen. If you're a foreigner, you pay 30 ring it. And then you catch the speed boat, which takes 45 minutes. And that's 70 ring it return. So it's, it's really cheap to get to this island and it doesn't take a long time. So if I got a weekend off, I'll definitely be coming back. All right, so on the way back to the hotel and just a little bit of information about this place. It used to be like a place where fishermen stayed and it wasn't really inhabited by many people. It's part of Terengganu, the state of Terengganu. And also back in the 70s when the Vietnamese escaped from the Vietnam War, they stayed at this island. Very fortunate to be in a position to come and travel like this. I see on the roads on the Malaysian highway how they get a lot of foreign workers from like Bangladesh. Need to cut the grass in 50 degree heat on the side of the highway and you really see how lucky you are. So we're staying on a resort here and a lot of the workers are from the Philippines because they serve alcohol here and that's haram and Muslims aren't allowed to touch that, so that's why they get Filipino workers and foreign workers to serve alcohol here. So this place is actually two islands, two main islands, Pahenshin Besa and Pahenshin Kechi. That one over there is the small island, so you either stay on the bigger one or the smaller one. The smaller one's for more for like backpackers, and the bigger one, which we're on, are for families and older people like us. <laughs> Food is pretty expensive on the island because a lot of it's imported. Even the coconut, I wanted to get a coconut yesterday, it's 10 ringgit for a coconut. And they're just over there, 10 ringgit. In Kelantan it's 2 ringgit. So you can see the massive price difference. So that's the good thing about living in Asia. If you've got a weekend free, you can just actually fly to another country, it's relatively cheap. Or go to an island, or visit another city. In Malaysia, there's so many beautiful cities, <coughs> so many beautiful cities, so many beautiful islands. And the Henshins is probably one of the nicest islands in, in Malaysia. So yeah, like I said before, this is one of the nice things about playing football in Asia. But, you know, it's not always good times, like I told you before, injuries looking for a new team, moving new places. It's difficult, but this is one of the perks of playing football in Asia, and I love it. Hey guys, so I'm back home now, and the reason, like I said before, we didn't play on the weekend was because Pearlies got pulled out of the competition. They hadn't paid their players in over two months, and Malaysian football kicked them out. So now Malaysian football has given these players one more month, even though the transfer window has closed to find a new team and it, it's a difficult situation for these players and it's worse for the foreigners because pretty much all the teams in Malaysia are full for their foreign quotas and that means they'll have to go to a new country and find a team. So it's a big waste of money, uh, 
big waste of time for these players. I've got a friend personally who plays for Per Lease. He played two games already and he scored two goals and he was looking good and then this happened. So it's a terrible situation to be in and Malaysian football need to make sure that these clubs are more financially responsible. They need to stick to a budget. Uh, maybe they need to show the amount of money that they have and work from there because it's, it's not a good way of, of doing business. I know in Germany, for example, they're a lot more a lot more careful with their finances. They stick to their budget and make sure that they don't overspend. So yeah, guys, it's just a small video to show you some of the bad stuff that can happen in Malaysia with football clubs and also what I do on a weekend off when I have uh, some spare time and I can explore. So hope you enjoyed this short little video and until next time, Ciao.